Good evening, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. Uh, I'm on my way to the AGU conference, the American Geophysical Union uh, conference in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. So I just um, I had a late night flight from Ottawa, so to Toronto. I'm at the Toronto airport, and um, because I went really cheap on the flight, um, I have a I have to wait until um, my flight. Uh, I'm flying to Detroit at 6 a.m. in the morning, so I've got about a, about an eight-hour wait, not quite seven-hour wait. And then from Detroit, I'm on, I'm on to uh, New Orleans, so I won't be arriving till about 10:30. So probably get to the convention center about noon or something, so I'll miss the morning events. There's not much going on in the morning, um, uh, but I'll, you know maybe I can get an maybe I can get an earlier flight and uh, you know on the next two connections. But anyway, it's I've never seen the airport uh, this deserted. You know, the Ottawa airport was pretty deserted and this one here is like there's almost nobody here. You know, you can see down a long walkway and it's it's like it's like a neutron bomb uh, hit, you know, killing all the people and, and leaving all the infrastructure intact. I don't know. Actually I shouldn't say that too loud, I'm in an airport, so it's probably you know, I can I can show this video as proof that I'm making a video, that's why I used the word. So anyway, um, I'm going to talk a little bit, bit about my strategy and tactics for this conference, which you know has huge numbers of talks. So, um, but I'll get moving um, as I do it. I also want to talk about artificial intelligence. That's the main reason I thought I would do this video, because in my opinion, there's been a very significant advance in, um, like, an abrupt change in artificial intelligence, an, a, an abrupt uh, breakthrough, and. I can relate how that might be important for climate change and uh, other things. So, just grab my bags here and get on this uh, es this uh, moving walkway. Okay, so obviously, you know, the tipping point that we may have actually already crossed is the Arctic sea ice loss and the snow cover loss in the spring because the Arctic is darkening so much. It's the warming is greatly accelerated there, and that's throwing off the jet streams, which is giving us all these extreme weather events. And we've just seen some interesting extreme weather, weather events with massive uh, snowfall in the deep south um, of the U.S. And uh, you know we've had very, very warm temperatures in in Ottawa, for example. So uh, you know much, much warmer than normal. I think October was about six or seven degrees Celsius warmer than normal, multiply by uh, 1.8 to convert that to uh, the Fahrenheit change, basically. So um, I'm obviously going to focus, um, you know, so I have to have a priority system. Um, so I think uh, what I'm going to do is anything, any talk to do with Arctic sea ice or snow cover decline, exponential decline, that's of course you know, top, highest top priority. I would say that would only be bumped by uh, talks on the jet stream. You know, so if there's talks on the jet stream but not in the context of the Arctic, that may uh, bump the Arctic talks. So, and I, and I know Michael Mann is uh, giving a talk on resonance of jet streams, which uh, would be very interested to see. Um, also, uh, anything to do with um, Methane, of course, um, you know, methane coming up from the, so methane clathrates coming up from the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf. Um, I think Similitov is on a paper. I don't know if he's attending the conference. So basically my objective is to go to as many scientific talks as I can to get the latest science on how the climate system is changing, to meet all of the top uh, key player, players in the climate science community, so Michael Mann, Jason Box on Greenland ice, um, Eric Holthouse, who's a uh, meteorologist, does a lot of blogging, uh, Peter Sinclair if he's here, Leslie Reed is, has this organization called um, ice911.org, you know, looking at ways of growing sea ice, for example. Um, he's giving a, num a num number of talks. 
There's Thomas Ackerman, who's University of Washington, giving a number of talks. If you want to actually go to the AGU 2017 website and download the scientific program, just have a look at it and search for some of these names I'm talking about in the video. You can see the topics of the, of the talks. So, you know, greenhouse gases, obviously not just methane, but nitrous oxide, very strong, black carbon, um, HFCs, for example, those greenhouse gases are also very, very powerful and can have an extraordinary impact. Look, it's completely dead. There's nobody here. Um, and, uh, you know, any talks on the Antarctic as well and what's happening, you know, in the uh, Southern Oceans in terms of, so anything to do with the sinks and sources of greenhouse gases, um, because those obviously, you know, affect the levels in the atmosphere. So, you know, are these sinks, are these, are we losing the sinks, for example, in the ocean, in the Amazon rainforest? So any talks like that, you know, there'll be very few talks on putting it all together, joining the dots, so to speak. And this is one of the problems that we have it, with humanity not being able to deal, you know, with uh, understanding, you know, that we're actually in an emergency, you know, putting all the pieces together. Scientists, you know, we've got basically a whole bunch of specialists. You know, only now are people starting to say, hey, you know, things are getting so bad and we have to figure out what's going on in the, in the big picture. Um, the, uh, so any geoengineering talks, so carbon dioxide removal, uh, solar radiation management, those are also a top priority. Um, when I was growing up, I always wanted to be an oceanographer, so I'm kind of, uh, you know, anything on ocean acidification, etc. I'll also be going to. So, and I'll be doing a couple videos each day at least on, you know, what I'm, you know, how the conference is going, insights, etc., things like that. So now I want to talk about AI. What's this quantum leap in artificial intelligence? Well, I'll give you a bit of background. It's basically, well, the punchline, okay? A black box, a, an algorithm was given the legal chess moves and that was it, nothing else. No human knowledge about chess, just the board's this shape, the pieces on the board are move this way. This is the, the objective, okay? No human knowledge, just the basic rules of the game. Then it played itself multiple times, you know, probably a million or two million times, something like that, who knows exactly. And it did this, it was only given four hours to do this. Okay, the program is called, there's a company called DeepMind, which was bought by Google. That's, those are the programmers. And the program's called Alpha Zero, so it's DeepMind Alpha Zero. And uh, so after four hours of playing itself, it played Stockfish 8, I believe. Um, it played the strongest program in existence. Now this program, Stockfish, um, is, the, is the culmination of maybe 30 years of computer programming to get the best possible chess program. So this thing is loaded with human knowledge about chess. It's loaded with openings, it's loaded with ideas, strategic concepts, like the center is strong, put your pieces in the center. Um, you know, if you're not sure what to move, look at the piece that's doing the least on the board. Um, you know, try to move things towards the center as opposed to the edge of the board. Get your knights as close to the center as possible because they're short range pieces. Bishops, get them on good diagonals, have flexibility to your position, guard your king. You know, Stockfish has been tweaked to be as strong as possible from all of these things. And uh, Alpha Zero had nothing, just the moves and four hours of playing itself. And they played a hundred game match. Now white has an advantage in chess, we know that. Okay, but how big is the advantage? I'll just keep walking here. Okay, well, the advantage is significant at high levels. So grandmasters, top players, it's a significant advantage. Um, but, you know, for most, most chess players, you know, the advantage is not so large to be white. So 100 games were played. The net result is AlphaZero crushed Stockfish. And Stockfish, by the way, 
can't be beaten by the top humans in, in a match. You know, in an individual game, maybe, but not in a match. So this is an extremely significant development. Um, and it's one that most people won't understand unless they play chess. But, you know, learning to become a good chess player takes years and years of effort. You know, some people play year, their whole life and they never get good at it. Other people, you know, have some natural talent and do a lot of studying and get really good. Myself, I, you know, I was really keen on it for a long time and I became ranked uh, 40th in Canada, something like that. You know, I was a strong master player. But one of the reasons I gave up is because I thought, you know, a machine is going to crush all humans soon. And it kind of took a bit of the enjoyment out of the game. I do play um, five minute chess quite a bit. You know, sometimes one minute chess, one minute per person for the whole game. Um, but anyway, so, stock, so Stockfish got destroyed. DeepMind Alpha Zero won 28 games and the rest of the games were draws. Didn't lose a single game. With White, uh, Alpha Zero won, t won uh, 20, 25 games and lost zero games. With Black, Alpha Zero won three games and the rest of 47 other ones were draws with Black. Th this, is, this is crazy. This is, this is crazy. If you think about how much better Alpha Zero is in Stockfish, I would say, you know, it's about half, if you take the, the gap that it's better by, about half of that gap is, is I think roughly, if you take the gap between white, the white's advantage over black's advantage, if it's a gap is like this, then about half of that gap between the white advantage and black advantage, that's how much better Alpha Zero is, because that translated into wins with when it was white, but it translated into almost being equal when it was black. Okay, so that's just a rough idea. Now imagine what can be done with four, with more than four hours. Give it eight hours, give it 10 hours, give it 12 hours. Of course, it's getting stronger every game it plays, so playing a match like this get, get, makes it much stronger. Give it some human knowledge. You know, like to give you an idea, it was like, you know, this is a huge event. If you don't play chess, like I said, you probably miss how significant this is for artificial intelligence. The program, uh, the algorithm Alpha Zero was written to play Go. It, well, it was written to um, have machine learning, and it was you know, but it was designed. It was designed to try to play Go because Go players, human players, were better than any computers. Go was a game where where computers weren't that you know couldn't match um, world level Go players. So, so a, a while ago you know, the program destroyed the top Go players, came up with moves that had never been seen before. Um, then it was also, uh, so it was given about, I don't, I don't know, it was given about eight hours or 10 hours or whatever to learn Go. Once it knew the moves to play itself and then it played the top Go players, destroyed them. Then the same thing was done with Shogi, which is, which is Japanese chess. And it learned that game in about two hours and destroyed the opponent you know, chess it was four hours. So this is an algorithm that is capable of learning, you know, very, very quickly and uh, far exceeding uh, anything out there before. So this is artificial intelligence. This is a, like a quantum leap. I've always said that, uh, you know, when we get artificial intelligence as, the, the tough part is getting it to be as, as intelligent as say the dumbest human on the planet okay i mean that can take 10 years 20 years 30 years once that's done once artificial intelligence is as smart as the dumbest human on the planet probably within six months to you know or a year or two at the maximum the artificial intelligence will have improved so much that it will be you know it'll be super einstein that that's a sort of um, exponential growth in learning that is capable there. So how does this relate to climate change? Well, imagine giving such a, an entity all the data, all the plots and things, all the different connections. All, I mean, all I'm doing is joining the dots on climate. What if we had all of this stuff in an algorithm and then Alpha Zero would say, well, how do we solve climate change? I know what it would say, get rid of Trump would be number one. And the second thing is uh, get all the humans off the planet. 
and and uh, that's that's probably what it would say. But we have to find a better option than that.